Hi guys, well we are a bit late to the party with the RTX 3080 coverage, but what can you do when Nvidia shows you no love? Thankfully, Asus has stepped in, they've kindly sent over this new model here. This is the tough RTX 3080 OC, so in today's video we're going to be taking a look at this new model here. By now you'll have already read, you'll have already seen all the details about the next gen series, so we're not going to spend any time going into that detail today, instead we're going to focus on this new card here, checking out all those features to see what it has to offer. The tough RTX 3080 OC comes with a triple fan cooling design courtesy of the Max Contact Thermal Solution. It also offers a slight performance enhancement there over Nvidia's stock frequencies by arriving with a factory overclock to the GPU. Now this card will probably be on pre-order in most countries at the moment, but uh, you can expect it to float around 750 in the US, 750 in the UK, and then just under 1400 in Australia. So with the RTX 3080s, this is probably going to be around the cheaper of the bunch. If you wanted to go for a Strix card, then you're looking at another 100 bucks on top of that. And so this may offer a good balance there of performance for the price. So, let's check it out. And before we get into our review, today's video is brought to you by Corsair and their new A500 CPU cooler. This huge thermal solution is ready to take on both Intel and AMD platforms and is equipped with four direct contact copper heat pipes as well as two ML120 cooling fans. Those fans can have their height adjusted thanks to the slide and lock mounting system, making it possible to add in memory which uses taller heat sinks. For more info on the A500, be sure to check out that link in the description. Okay, so here is our Tough 3080 OC. Against previous generations of the Tough graphics cards, this one here has quite a different appearance. Straight away you can tell that the triple fan cooling is the main highlight for this card, and later on we'll be taking it apart to see what Azus has done in terms of the thermal design. We'll also check out how effective it is at the end of our video. I won't spoil it for you except to say it works very well. And so that shroud is metal rather than plastic, and so we're getting a solid piece of kit in this GPU. That does, however, come at a cost in terms of the weight. I really like the detail, the styling, and the colorway which has been used here. It'll definitely coordinate well with other hardware. And as far as the RGB goes, it is a toned down affair with just this small section lit up. The lighting here can sync up with other ASUS products, and of course can be customized. All you gotta do is install that Armory Crate software. Now our GPU can be defined as gigantic. You can see it here next to this Strix. Our card is colossal in size, but in all seriousness, it pretty much dwarfs anything that we've taken a look at. And so here are the dimensions for those who are interested. The length is around 297 millimeters. For the width, it is just under 126. And then the height is 54. And so be sure to check out the internal measurements of your case, just to make sure that it's gonna fit as this thing is huge. Now there are two models for the Tough series under the 3080 banner, one which sits at the stock NVIDIA frequencies, and then we have this one here which has a factory overclock. And so the GPU clock boost is set at 18.15 MHz, that has been shifted up from 17.10, and so over 100 MHz there. And the memory clock sits at the reference settings of 19 gigabits. With the introduction of the 3080 we get a whopping 10 gig of GDDR6X, and that has a 320-bit bus, and a few other things just to note, this card uses the PCR Express 4 standard, comes with the 8704 CUDA cores, has DirectX 12 support along with Vulkan 1.2 and OpenGL 4.6. Now in terms of your computer case, this card is a double slotter, but it will stray into a third PCI Express due to that shroud being slightly taller, and so this is classified as a 2.7 slot card. On the back panel we have three DisplayPort 1.4s, those can give you up to 8K at 60, and we also have two HDMI 2.1 ports, and that new standard allows us to tap into 4K at 120 and 8K at 60, and so plenty of high-end flexibility there. Now there's been a lot of talk about the power requirements and the power delivery of the RTX 30 series. I'm not going to go into any details on that as it's already been widely covered, but our GPU has two 8-pin connectors and it is recommended to have a 750 watt power supply. If you are using the high-end desktop platform, then it is advised to go for 850 watt. And Azus has given the power connectors the usual LEDs to let you know if power isn't correctly being fed in, whether that is because of a receipt or insufficient power. Turning to the back of the card, we have a metal backplate which protects 
like PCB and it provides some firmness. We get a pocket of ventilation towards the tail end of the card which should help to push out that unwanted heat. On the back we also get the dual BIOS switch allowing you to switch between performance or quiet mode. The quiet mode adjusts the fan speed and you can enjoy less noise by switching to that. Okay well we've taken the cooler off our tough card and so what we have are those triple fans which are the Axial Tech fans we've seen on previous Asus cards. Those are 90mm, they have the zero decibel technology meaning they'll stop spinning when idle and when they do spin that middle fan there spins in a clockwise direction whereas the others will spin anti-clockwise which reduces the turbulence. For the heatsink we have the return of the max contact design which is effectively a twin heatsink configuration which provides VRM coverage. Asus has also given the memory some dedicated heatsinks to prevent that heat being an issue. I'd be sure to stick around to the end of the video I was going to test out this cooler to see how effective it really is. Having the heatsink removed means that we can also get a good view of the design of this board. This tough model here features a huge 16 phase power design for the GPU and then another 6 just for the memory. And the driving force behind the 3080 is that new GA102 GPU which carries through that 8 nanometer process and the Ampere architecture. Based on the spec of the GPU and the memory configuration this card is really designed for 1440p and beyond. So with that rundown out of the way let's now check out the performance of this 3080 against its closest rival the 2080 Ti. And instead of just sticking up some graphs and talking about them I'm actually going to show you the performance side by side and for this we'll use 1440p in the maximum detail preset in each game and just to note that in Battlefield we have the ray tracing enabled. Now we're using the very latest drivers from Nvidia as of the end of September. We'll also have GPUZ there running in the background to pick up on the max temperatures. The result for that will come at the end. Again, if we just come out of our last game, let's see the max temperature results. And there we have it. Alrighty, well that is the tough RTX 3080 OC. By now you guys will be familiar with what to expect from the 3080, especially when you compare it to that 2080 Ti. You're getting a much better card, which costs less, that is, against the 2080 launch price. The prices will, of course, have started to tumble with this next generation launch. And now in swing and I think really where the next generation stuff makes sense is for people who have perhaps skipped the RTX 20 series they're still using the likes of the 1080 the 1080 Ti if you're upgrading from those cards then a move to the 3080 is definitely worthwhile and it becomes even more relevant if you're you know gaming at 1440p and beyond and especially if you've got a high refresh monitor as we've seen this comes with the HDMI 2.1 which now paves the way for 4K at 120. So on to the actual design of the card. I really like what Asus has done with the styling. It is a really nice looking GPU. The thermals are exceptional. Our card topped out at 60 degrees and under load in game we saw it float in the high 30s and into the 40s in terms of decibels. Bearing in mind that also does include our overall system noise. So if you're on the hunt for a 3080 then this one is definitely worth checking out. Just bear in mind a few things, it does come with a factory overclock to the GPU but not to the memory. It is huge in size as you can see here, so installing it into your case might be a bit of a problem. Make sure you check out those dimensions and you will need a 750 watt power supply. 
So what do you guys think of this new card here? And are you planning an upgrade to the RTX 30 series? Let me know in the comment section below. We'd love to hear about your upgrade plans and your opinions on this card. A web review for this 3080 will be on screen in the description very soon. We've got a completely different set of benchmarks there, different resolutions and comparison to other cards. So check that out. A big thanks to you guys for watching today. Please like this video as that always does help. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing with those notifications enabled. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.